to tell you that it's up to you to choose joy. It's up to you to tell the truth. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Omega, the gift and the curse. This is life and I accept it. I'm looking for real moments. Like when the energy is just, it's so undeniable that it captures everyone. Early on in our career, when we were able to really brand ourselves through the touring business, that's when I saw the change. That's when I remember change happened within the group and it was because we were on tour and we were able to really connect with people. We're trying to continue to create those moments because it's truly endless. I can't be on stage with someone that wants to throw their mic and maybe potentially hit, you know, a fan and now they don't want to sue Raz, they want to sue B2K. You gotta get off the tour, there's no way. After all of the shit we've already had to deal with with him, it's a wrap, bro. He should not be given no more chances at this point. One of the things I told Michelle, the moment that it stops being fun, I'm out. I had never met Ricky until uh, the tour. I do recall in our earlier discussions before we ever went on tour, you know, the actual separate code of conduct that Raz had to sign. And one of the things in there was Ricky Romance couldn't be on the tour. Certainly Raz is suffering from PTSD, likely some other mental health issues, whether it's bipolar or, or paranoid schizophrenia. I don't know, and I'm not in a capacity to make that diagnosis. But I think that we have to approach this from the context that this is a human issue. If Raz, in performing last night, fell and broke his leg, and in the context of falling and breaking his leg, he destroyed some equipment, we would have called 911, we would have got him to the emergency room, he would have been treated, and nobody would have bitched about what got broken, right? But because it was in the context of what looked like bad behavior, because we don't have the capacity to understand, support, and intervene mental health, we now want to punish him and get rid of him. I am not saying to throw Raz away. But in the current form of which he's in, which is in the context of hanging with his brother, uh, getting high, getting drunk, and picking fights with people at the backstage area, outside on the sidewalk, I don't think that Raz is ever going to say, okay, send my brother home, because he's never had. We need to send him home. We need to make an executive decision, get the ticket, put him in the car, and send him home. Because Raz is not going to do it. Gary and everybody is having this conversation about Ricky Romance, and, and Demir is convinced that he is an antagonist. 
I think collectively for the tour, we call them into the production room and we let them know, thank you for your services. You're being escorted to the hotel to get your stuff and you can get out of here. And we can do that in a professional manner and, and we can do it where, but whether he makes a scene or not, but to me it's right. He needs to have a ticket bought for him and he needs to have a car service to take him to the airport. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Ultimately, um, there was a collective decision that Ricky had to go. So a plane ticket was bought and transportation arranged and everybody expected that Ricky had left the tour. Firstborn. My mom had me at a very young age, at 16, actually. And my father was very young, too. He was like 15. My environment was just that, you know, kids raising kids. And when he came out, he just turned around and looked at everybody in the room like, oh my God, this is going to be something different. <laughs> when he was born, I, was, I got a call. Actually, they called me out of my cell. Omalafe, his grandmother, she came up with the concept Omari. Omari Ishmael Granberry, that's who he is. And I asked her, you know, where'd you get it from? She told me it was a Bible name. She gave me the history behind the name, who Omari was. And I said, that's befitting. Yeah, th these are things we hope. We hope and strive for it. It is a word, it is a king. Well, I knew he was special. Because he always used, when I used to get him from uh, daycare, everybody knew who this boy was. I'm like, who, 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 how they know you? Grown folks, hi, Omari, hi, Omari. I'm like, oh, Lord, who know you? Well, I didn't meet Omari. I met Omari. And it was at one of the preschools that I taught at. We did a little stretching and a little ballet and a little tap. And Omari is not participating. But when the funky drum part came on, he broke out. I met Omari on. He was about 14 and I was working at Los Angeles Academy of Fine Arts. And Michelle's always looking for talented people. And I was like, I kept calling her, I was like, Michelle, answer your phone. And I said, Michelle, this little boy, he's cute, he's charming, he got his own style, and Michelle, this boy is a star, trust me. So I came down, and the very first thing I remember is that smile. You know, and his energy was always just up, and if you say dance, he would just start, you know, <laughs> going in, like, he danced all the time. He was just so special. Man, I'm ATL, and we back! Y'all looking good in that horse, yeah? It's only a few artists that actually have shared this time with us. And Bow Wow is the number one artist. The Scream Tour is the reason why we were able to really connect with the fans of today. And now and then, you know, it was because Bow Weezy was kicking up that dust. You feel me? What's up, <laughs> he is someone that I actually will put in the same space as the boys. It's like B2K and Bow Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the fucking building. Stop playing. This shit is crazy. He got me nerves. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I love it, man. You know what I'm saying? My brother's back on the road. They doing, they post me doing, they get to that money. I love seeing my people get to that bag. 
sometimes like when you start doing different shit and your career take you in a, a different path, you be like, I don't know if I'm gonna ever see this shit. Right, 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 right. But then when you see it again, it's like, dang. Like, no one really has the opportunity to show camaraderie, and that's really why I wanted you to come more than anything. Bow Wow is one of uh, our youngest, oldest friends. When we go, it's all gas, no brakes, from beginning to end, so. I'm a little different when I'm in the keyboard player role. I know y'all used to seeing me just delegate and run the show, but I'm actually a part of the show now, so I gotta be sharp. I don't drink for the show, I don't smoke for the show. You drink and I smoke for the show. <laughs> Sorry. If they miss one hit, it will be a doc. You understand me? It's gonna be like, oh man, I looked at my check and it was short. Yeah, from when we were in Cleveland and you missed that one outro. Yeah, we take that out the check. <laughs> We did, in our two shows that we did, we did 1.1 1 .1, and between the three shows, the two LA shows and the one show that was in, at the Oracle. We did 3.1. No, we did 5 million. Million. We just proved that the, the brand, B2K, yep, yep. is valuable, right? Facts. And that's a stat right there. That's a, that's a crazy stat. You know, we share that record with Prince. I'm, I'm very grateful for this run. I would, I would, I would definitely like to make another one because I would like to really chip up, you know, because I would like to make some more money. Part of the reason why the Millennium Tour is happening is because of Raz B. You know, I remember being annoyed years and years and years ago. Like, man, he just, he don't want to let this go. First of all, they're saying already publicly I heard that. that they have B2K. Oh, and love and hip hop. Yeah, I had some. They don't say we got Raz B, Lil Fizz, and J Bug. They saying, and they said, and they put a fake narrative out there. I just seen, I seen that too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like it's already it's already fucking up our opportunity for us to do this again. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's what it's looking like to me. Anytime you enter into agreement with someone, that everyone is mindful of the ecosystem. You know, you got to keep your shit clean. On one hand, we can't say we're gonna do a song, but then on another hand, you're gonna be getting in a fight with Bug. If we talking about making bands, nigga, like what you just said, like, yo, I would like to pop up again, that opportunity gone. That opportunity gone because it's like, what, what we look like now? Do we look at, we look at thirsty now? Cause it's like, oh, we going right back to back after it. And then after it, it's like, oh, niggas is talking bad about each other. It's like, come on, man. Are you ain't never talked to them? You never want to have that talk? I, Is I it not time for that? No, I, I just don't know that it's that important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true. It's really, it's really, is it important? Like, it's really not. It's, if niggas, it's really if niggas, not. niggas knows what's good for the, for the brand, niggas would do what's right by it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is if you can't even identify what's good for the brand already, then you playing catch up. We ain't playing catch up. You, you recognize the equity that's been had with us coming back together as a collective. But, you know, the other boys, I don't know that they see it like that. Let me show you elevation. Let me show you elevation. Rochester, about to go check on catering and make sure I'm straight with the meal for tonight. We gonna see you tonight. The Love & Hip Hop brand is a big brand. Mona and her team, they asked, they said, you know, do you have any other friends or, you know, um, people that, you know, we could interview and see, you know, cause they're all about connections, you know, and in interweaving people into storylines and et cetera. And I, I offered a fizz. He was living with his mom at the time. I think he was in between places. It was an opportunity, and I'm not one to hold opportunity from people. But I never thought <laughs> that it would uh, turn into what uh, it's turned to. Yeah, I'm not going yet. I'm just saying, I'm here with who I'm here with, okay? Oh, going there. I'm ready for the Millennium Tour. This. Is y'all ready for this? Because I'm coming without no, 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 the ponytail. No, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it. I'm gonna, oh, I do his hair and everything. You know, we was hanging out a lot. We was uh, working out with Scotty P, you know what I mean? 
Fizz was a part of that. You know what I mean? All the, all of the, the bike rides. He even came to the crib and cooked, you know, a few times. The limelight is a, an interesting medium. It does something different to everyone. Do you consider him your brother? He would be considered a constituent. And a constituent is, is basically someone that aligns with someone else, just like a basketball team. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not brothers on the team, but they are playing one game to win a championship. I wouldn't consider him my brother like I would consider Orion my brother. And then I will also say he's different from Raz because Raz understands certain concepts about brotherhood because he has a brother. You know, for this short period of time, we can come, we can win this championship real quick, and then, you know, everybody goes back to their life. Yo, so the situation is the audio uh, monitor console has went down completely. Okay. So everything that comes from the band, from your monitors, your in ears, goes through the splitter which goes to the front of the house. So without that, you guys wouldn't be able to hear and you wouldn't be able to see a certain audio signal down. So right now they're trying to cool, they think it's because it's so hot, but the other console is fine. So they're trying to work through it. So. You all used to see that shit over there? That motherfucker is out like a motherfucker. I don't know where it is. Y'all know y'all hot too. We having some technical difficulties. This is the first time in the tour that we've had this. Out here in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, the uh, soundboard went down, and uh, we can't perform the show without sound. Let's go, we gotta try this. We gotta try to pull one of these out. No, there's no power supply. The board's down. Mm -hmm. it won't power up. How do I tell all these people that the show may not happen? I'm gonna talk to the audio company. You know, we're separate from them, but you know, we're gonna try. We're all trying to help them get to. So we should help the show. For the yes, been there. <laughs> At that point, everybody's saying, you know, can't fix it. It's not happening. It's, 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 we may have to, you know, what are we gonna do? What can you do? Great. And literally, within seconds, the board fires up. A lot of people say postpone, but does it really get does it really get recycled back? Can the tour make it this way? No. Can some Mario set in the hometown? No. Like we just pray, man. You know, like what else can you do? Pray. You got to pray. And you see what happens when you pray. You're right. One, three, one, two, three. Be today. We at Hitsville, Motown. We in the D-Bag. What's up? How y'all doing? Thanks for giving us the blueprint on what to do, Chris. I had a fan come up to me and say that somebody had sold her a pass. Ricky, Raz's brother. Ricky should have been gone. How is he at a show selling passes to fans? 
Another fan showed me a picture that she had taken with him. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I didn't want to say anything because already, you know, the emotions were running high around Ricky. At this point, the promoter was like, if I see him, Raz is off the tour. My brother has no family. Don't people don't understand that? Like I'm his only family he got, and my mom. And he was in China for seven years. And he came back for a year to put the group together. Like, nigga, don't show me away from my brother, nigga. I ain't seen him in seven years. He was about to have a fight in, I think it was Nashville. He was gonna beat to the experience party, and it was some dude that I don't know who he was with, some security dude. And my brother told me, he said, put the four walls up. He said, I don't want nobody talking to my girl. He said, keep her close to you. There was no drinks at that venue. So I went and I got Callie, my sister. I went and got her a Coca-Cola. And so the dude was trying to get her soda from her. And I was, you know, and he wasn't asking her. He told her. And I was like, who is this dude? And I'm like, bro, like, don't, like, bro, you need to ask her, bro. Don't tell her. Don't give her no orders. That's my brother's girl, bro. I never even met this dude. He turned it up like, oh, let's go. He tried to escalate it. I have to do nothing. I'm on a choke chain. I'm literally waiting for a cousin to take me off the leash. Because I can go all the way over here and not have his blessings and go on one. And run everybody over. Ricky was volatile, and I understood now why there was a concern with him being present. Because although his intention was to be supportive, he wasn't the right type of support that Raz needed on tour. I'm not the problem. I'm just here to serve the fucking kingdom, man. I'm just, once I'm giving an order, I'm like this. I'm like, with the blindfolders on, my nigga. I'm, all I know is execute, nigga. I will run you over to execute this job. Now, admittedly, Raz was probably the only guy who didn't have dedicated security, who didn't have dedicated road management, and who probably needed it the most. It's just always some bullshit, and it's like, as black people, we should be able to work with each other and work through these things. It's real talk, man. At that point, I kind of said, well, if nobody sees him, and if he's not doing anything, you know, let's just let sleeping dogs lie. And put this Gary nigga to know that, that I'm not no liability, that shit needs to be figured out. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> about a hundred we talking to billy you know how my front lawn shit looking silly <laughs> who did and i lose? really really who got really play? really i ain't used to smoke but now i smoke a split pain be like oh shit and i'll be like oh shit and i'll be getting lit <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was a lot of things that I was now at this point in time getting privy to. Wait, come on, I got lipstick on. It don't even matter. It don't even matter. It's like, oh, you better make out on the face. Come on, Raph. No, right now, bro. Hey, Raph. Raph, don't be sitting there, bro. You can tell when someone's energy is they're ag they're agitated or they're moving around and you know he was he was doing all of that you know he wasn't focused and he was saying things and you know, I was just like yo what's 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 good touch oh he love you what's up yeah hey. yeah have your moment let her have her moment how many more six 
Not everybody robbing them. You know how passionate I am about this. But you gotta book, baby. You gotta hurry up, though. We gotta get this picture though. One. But you gotta hurry up. Two. Hello. Now you gotta we love you. Yeah, Fierce, she want to take you home, dog. Fierce, she want to, um, give her a fierce lesson, bro. Let's get you in there. Let's get you in there. I mean, I knew something was wrong, but at that moment, we needed to be professional. We needed to, you know, make sure that the fans, you know, we're, we're receiving why they came. You know what I'm saying? Not like ignoring them or having our own personal conversation or. Focus on the fans. Yeah, but the guys. I don't know what's over there. He needs to relax, though. He needs to. I don't know what that energy is about. You know what I mean? Well, it's a, something triggered him. So we're seeing a pre-trigger to an episode. Oh, okay. So right. we need to yeah, yeah, take yeah. that down. Actually, uh, maybe it was Book's shirt. What does it say? I don't feel safe. Oh, why the fuck? We find out that what triggered him, what agitated him, was that Book wore a t-shirt that said, I don't feel safe. Big, bold, white on a black shirt that was clearly a reference to what Raz had said in New York about not feeling safe about Chris being around. Raz being officially off the tour. I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. Because I feel like Chris Stokes is around. I wasn't really picking up that Bug was fucking with his head like that. Why the fuck would you wear the shirt? You know what I'm saying? Why would you do that? Why would Bug take a phrase that was definitely publicized, I don't know. that's sensitive to this man, and put it on a shirt to right. mock him? Yeah, I don't know, Ma. I, I don't know. That's not cool. I don't know. But I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ask him. I'm gonna go make yeah, sure. Yeah, see I'm gonna what's go. good with him. Cause yeah, we gotta gonna... dial him down. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, but it's like yeah. Well, you know, part of it is he has a pimple to pop. So let him pop it in a contained space. Right. right. Do you feel me? Don't right. let it pop on stage. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So let that. Well, shit I'm gonna go say. I'm gonna go see what's up. With okay. Me. Yeah, I just want to make sure you know you all good for the show, cause you know that energy, you know that energy. Once you start tapping into that energy. You know, it's like a tumbleweed. Yeah, you can bring that back, yeah. I had to talk to him, I could not take it anymore. The energy that that you're carrying right now feels like pressure to me, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and I could be wrong. Well, it's been it's been, it's been the pushback on me. Everybody made it seem like I've always been a problem. My has never fucking been a fucking problem, ever. If anybody ever came into my world, it's like, nigga, what's poppin', nigga? What you going through, nigga? What's really up, nigga? So what, what is No, you, you've done that. That's why I'm, I'm getting counseling right now. Okay. You feel me? I'm very happy. Because I, I trust Amari. I trust you. Yeah, yeah. You deal with me right. I don't trust nobody else. Even I don't care these niggas don't like me because I love these niggas more than they love me. Nigga, they know how much I love them, nigga. I'm lit, nigga. Right here. I'm lit. All my intentions are pure. I always have. He's still hurt. He hasn't been healed. I'm leaving the tour. And I'm... I'm going solo. Solo, y'all can't hear me. <laughs> solo, y'all can't hear me. Say romance. Romantic fate. <laughs> We're gonna call the new album Gone. <laughs> and we have someone else that is covertly and consistently just antagonizing him. For what? Why? But y'all never gotta worry about me fucking up for them. I ain't gonna never fuck enough for you, bro. Ever. I'm out your way. And my name is out your mouth. So we good. On history, cuz. Thank you for, like, letting me, like, meet your kids and shit. Bro. Thanks. It's all good, Raz. I always let this nigga, man. Then he always been my brother. Like, we always been brothers, yo. I got you, all I got That's you. That's about my line, nigga. It's cool. You can just give me a call real quick, but nigga, I ain't never tried to be in your way, bro. Hey, it's okay, man. I just want you to get healed up. You feel me? So you can really rise. You know what I'm saying? You can't rise 
have baits. You know what I mean? You can't. You gotta. You gotta build up your strength, bro. You gotta build up your strength. And, and, and right, and right now, lie. it's just a lie. Bro. I understand. It's, it's been a lie. I know you're trying to be crazy. Yo. It's just a lie, bro. Yo. I swear to God, when you go dark, you this shit and kill it, cuz. Man, I'm very powerful. I can't bro. I keep it together, bro. I keep it together this long, nigga. I can't keep it together, bro. Get this shit together, man. Let me go. Yeah. Oh, Some we, people don't know. We love you, okay? I know y'all. I know y'all do. We love you. I know y'all do, though. I'm not asking for no sympathy about this. No. I'm just telling y'all, my nigga, it's been real hard. No, no. It's been hard, man. You got support, though, okay? Yeah, yeah, because now I, I, I worked for it. I was obedient. I did everything I could. I did everything yeah. I could. Every, I, I, did, yeah. I did everything. I, I did everything I could to get back to people that love me, man. That's all I've ever tried to do, man. I ain't do nothing fucking wrong, man. Even if I did, it's human being shit, no, niggas. Y'all see my fault. energy? I'm it's fucking not here. Fault. It's not. Y'all niggas want to see me turn up. No, we don't. No, we don't. <sighs> Let it go. Listen, it's not your fault, okay? It's not, not your fault, fault man. <laughs> I'm a fucking hell for these niggas, cuz. Mm-mm. 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 Mm-mm